right, everyone, welcome back to round two of the Highlighter Declutter. If you have not seen part one, I will leave that down below along with all previous declutters as well as the declutter playlist. We're just gonna get right on in. I'm gonna reiterate what I said in the first one for any newcomers. We are not gonna be swatching today or we're gonna do minimal swatch. I'm not gonna be swatching everything because I just want to go with my gut and swatching tends to make me want to keep things because ooh, pretty pretty swatch swatch. Also the main reasoning behind this is not to just get rid of all kinds of whatevers. Um, I'm looking to declutter things that are too deep for me, formulas I'm not really happy about, and things that are old. So as I said in the first one we started out with two eighty something in that range so with kind of same with the blush is I'm hoping to declutter at least around 50 hopefully more to just really thin out my collection and really just have and keep and use what I love so without further ado let's just get on into this and hopefully we're not here for another hour okay let's tackle some elf here i like having all kinds of different affordable options because i understand that not everybody has the same budget to be blowing on fancy fancy high-end highlighters and there are a lot of lower budget highlighters that are absolutely amazing so what we've got here are two of just their like normal ones this one here is in pearl glow then i do have this one in a uh, shimmer highlighting powder in starlight glow i've used this one a fair amount this is actually a really nice formula it isn't like super crazy smoothie smooth it is a little bit thicker a little bit whatever but i do like having these and i do want to pull these into a makeup rotation to get more use out of them and same goes with these ones these are actually like duo chromatic whatever duos these didn't get really good reviews but I think they are a beautiful, nice, affordable, like duo chromatic, kind of like if you want to get that effect of the um, Kat Von D Alchemist palette, I think these are a really great option. They're nice and smooth and they look good on the skin. I think this is an underrated formula and just an underrated like kind of crazy highlighter. This one is Mermaid Tail. Then this one here, I love this one popping this highlighter over an orangey or a peachy blood. Mm, absolutely stunning. This one is in Siren's Call. And then this one, which is kind of purpley, bluey, whateverness, is in Blue Lagoon. So I do want to pull these into a makeup rotation. You'll probably be seeing them soon. Next up, we have the J Cat Beauty You Glow Girl Baked Highlighters. This is one of my absolute favorite baked highlighter formula. It is just these two right here are so amazing. They're perfect, pale person friendly, absolutely beautiful crystal sand. And then this one here in White Goddess. This one I use a lot when you have a highlighter, a crazy colored highlighter that's got a little too much um, like back color pigment. I mix it with this and it just really helps to kind of smooth it out and give you that effect like with this one here, which is like kind of greeny, which I love. But you don't want to have that intense of a green shift. You mix these two together and they're absolutely stunning. This one is in Mermaid Skin. So those three I'm keeping. These two right here, I love the formula, but I think these two, y'all know that at a certain point in my whatever, I had to have, had to purchase full ranges of blush and highlighter and whatever, even if it wasn't going to work for me. So I'm pretty sure these two are just too deep. Let me get a little swatch going on. This is why swatching is always dangerous because that top one, I'm like, oh, that's so pretty, but it's just, it's just too deep for me. I'm not going to use it. This one is in Twilight, and then this one, it's a little too deep for me, and it's also not as nice as the other ones. It's a bit more glittery, a bit more powdery, not as smooth. This here is in Pink Goddess, so these two are going to go. This one here is a nice summertime highlighter for me. This one is in Moon and Back. 
this one here in Bella Rosa, and this, this one's, oh, this one's so pretty. I love this one in the summertime. That is Moonlight, and then this one here, a lot of people were like, oh, it's not as good as the other ones. And I think that's because it's kind of more of a shifty duochrome pink than it is like an actual just completely pink toned highlighter, and it is beautiful for being that nice light like corn kind of more ethereal pink going on so all of these ones are gonna stay and we're gonna move up the way to these AOA perfect pressed highlighters um these are okay these are from shop miss a so they are a dollar they're kind of they're a more subtle kind of a softer strobing effect not really something that's going to give you a high shine or glossy or shimmery effect it really is just kind of a more subtle softer diffused highlighter look, which is something that I go for, but I have ones that I love and use a lot. I mean, they're pretty. They're just something, like I said, they're a little bit softer, a little bit more subtle, not really dwelling into that kacha cha realm. So I think for now, I'm going to put these in the maybe section, and then we'll see where we're at at the end. Then random here, once again, I was in my, oh, I need to spend money and I need to try a highlighter from every single brand that exists. These are the Pretty Vulgar Shimmering Swan Highlighters. And these are actually pretty nice. They are a, they're like a mixture between a thicker and a, th they're kind of like mid thickness. They're not really light and smooth, but they're also not like Jeffree Star Skin Frost um, thick. This one is in Glimmer of BS. Then we have this one, Who Boy, in Glow Up. And then there's this one that I totally impulse purchased because I saw someone in either a declutter or a collection video, and I was like, that's pretty. And this is Lilac Lust. These are something that I definitely want to get more use out of, and I want to try them out a lot more. I know that I've used these two a couple of times, and I really liked how they looked, but y'all know that I have loads, and I just kind of need to thin everything out so that I can get more use out of the ones that I want to try to use. And the packaging is all kinds of real pretty and aesthetically pleasing. I'm not sure what's going on with this brand, because I know a lot of their products are going on sale at Sephora, so I don't know if they're going to be booted out soon. I know they're actually, they've only been on there for, I want to say, two or three years. But for now, I am going to keep these. Then some Shop Miss A highlighters that I got specifically for that, you know, inexpensive highlighter video. These are good. If you have a deeper skin tone and you want a really smooth, nice, inexpensive highlighter, I would recommend these. If these were in my, um, <laughs> were in my color family, were good for my pasty pasty, I'd be keeping them. They're really nice and smooth and pigmented. And for a dollar, like I said, if they carried these in my color whateverness, because these are, I think they're, they're marketed as two in one bronzer and and highlighter. I'm not going to keep them just for potentially using one side just because I don't have the space. But like I said, if you are someone who is of that deeper complexion melanin, these are really nice and something I would recommend from the site. Okay, good old Lunar Beauty. We all know that I love the packaging on these. These are his Moon Prism powders. We have got four shades. I'd absolutely love for him to expand this collection. This one, which is obviously the one best for me. This one is in Mercury. I also really like this peachy one in Mars. And then this one is really good in the summer in Venus. The one that would be called into question, because obviously, like I've said, I have issues with purchasing whole ranges. This is obviously not a highlighter marketed for ya girl, which is actually kind of what I like about this because the majority of them, like these three, can be for like medium skin tones and deeper and there's only like one pasty pasty. I thought that was a really nice level of inclusivity in a launch. And I say this one here is in Jupiter, but the formula of these is just 
so nice. Like, look how pretty that is. Let me see up here. I think I am going to hold on to these. They are a relatively new purchase. I'm pretty sure these were released in 2019. I'm going to keep that one and try it as a blush topper highlighter situation. And if it doesn't work like that, then I will declutter it. But it is a beautiful, super underrated formula. Highly recommend these. He did a fantastic job. He needs to make 50 million more colors. Okay, getting into sort of a gray zone here. I have these two from Milani. I remember when these were released, I was like, ooh, it's a highlighter. It's from Milani. I want this shiz. And I expected them to be kind of more of just a straight up highlighter where these are kind of akin to the Becca Light Chaser highlighters where they kind of, there's one shade and then they shift to something else. And I'm not entirely sure that I'm in love with these. So I need to figure out if this is something that if I'm not entirely in love with, I need to get rid of, or if I'm not entirely in love with and I need to use more. We've also got three of their regular ones. This is definitely a formula I need to use more. This one here is in Strobe Light, I think. I don't know if that's the name of them. Okay, 03 Sun Glow. This one here was in Afterglow. And then this one here is in Day Glow. They are a more, I want to say like subtle to mid highlighter. They're not going to give you a super high shine like Fenty or those ones from ColourPop. But you know, for a more softer, natural, whatever look, I do want to get more use out of these and they do look very pretty on the skin. So I do know it's at least a finish that I like working with. I just need to get more use out of them and really kind of look and see and compare to like all my subtle highlighters. So for now, I am going to keep these and we'll probably pulling them into a makeup rotation fairly soon. And these two, all right. This one here is in Utter Luster Light and this one in Luminous Light. I've given them a little bit of a swatch and I feel like these are kind of, like I said, kind of shifty duochrome I've got the ones from e.l.f. I've got the ones from, I mean, how many kind of pinky, peachy, shifty highlighters have I already kept in formulas that I know I enjoy? I think I'm just gonna, just gonna let these ones go because they're not, they're not really impressing me. I wasn't super pleased when I used them. So I think it's time for me to just say goodbye. So long for now. You can make someone else happy. Then maybe a sort of controversial, I I'm going to keep these. They're not my favorite. They are sort of a less good version of the Jeffree Star Supreme Frost over there. But I have found a way to use these that I like and they are fun for putting over a more just just a straight up highlighter. You want a little something something. You want a little glitter. You want a little shine. I do want to start getting into uh, doing more editorial esque looks and I think these would be really good for that. So this one here is in gold school. We've got this one rose shock. This one is actually really really pretty topped over a peachy blush or even like a more neutral nudie blush that you want to get a little bit of like a little peachy tone to. I'm getting a little bit more um adventurous <laughs> with my blush and with my creativity with my makeup. That's gamma ray. This one here here is in Stephonic. And then this one's actually a lot of fun over an orange blush. Um, I, I want to get into like yellow blush. I want to be crazy and awesome like um, Lacey from Spooky Lips and Fat Hips. This one is in Gravitron. And then we're keeping the 10th anniversary one, which is a less good version of Gold School just because I bought it and I want to keep it and I haven't reached the point where I'm gonna declutter it. And I've got two from Cover Effects. I felt so mad right after purchasing these off of Sephora. I went to Marshalls and they had them for like $12 and I was like, not cute. And then these are from Essence. Actually, this one right here, this is the ever so famous Pure Nude, is basically the same sort of thing as the cover effects ones. Where it's a more softer, more smooth, just kind of a 
delicate, gentle glow. So if you're into a more soft and subtle highlighter and you don't want to pay out for the cover effects, uh, the Essence one is pretty banging. The cover effects, this one here is in sunlight and then this one is in moonlight. I think for now, this is a product that I want to hold on to and then once again, pull into a rotation to really get some, oh, hello, what's up? I guess I film on my phone for those of you who did not know. But I do want to get more use out of this and then I can use this one to compare Essence Pure Nude. And then these are two from Essence that are once again that duochromy shiftiness that if you don't want to spend a lot of money but you want to try this out, these are both really, really good. For being a highlighter that costs like three or four dollars, these ones, they, they come to, they don't come to play, man. They're just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. This is Be My Space Light. And then this one here is Be My Cosmo Light. Another sort of, um, shouldn't a bought it, not products I regret buying, but shouldn't have bought it. The Disney Villains ColourPop Super Shock um, highlighters. If I had known that these were Super Shock or if I'd paid attention, I probably wouldn't have purchased them because the Super Shock formula is something that takes a bit of work. Y'all know that I'm not typically the biggest fan of like cream, cream to powder, but uh, a couple of y'all have recommended a couple of videos to kind of show me and teach me and kind of show ways about how to use these, how to get that beautiful high shine on your cheeks. So I have these, I don't wanna get rid of them, even though some of them, some of them are a little bit too dark. I mean, can we adjust? <laughs> But like I said, I do want to try to get use out of these. There are a couple shades that are just absolutely stunning. I love the packaging. I love the aesthetic. They are a recent whatever into my collection. And so I'm gonna hold on to them for a little bit longer for a couple different reasons. And I'm gonna try my hardest to see if I can figure out how to get these beautiful sheeny glossiness onto my cheeks. Cause y'all know when it comes to highlighter, I like that sheen. I like that glow. I like that luminous effect. Okay, then one here, we have a cult favorite uh, Mary Luminizer by The Balm. This is a highlighter that I bought because everybody loved it. Everybody said you had to have it. And I mean, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not one, I mean, I'm, I'm going to declutter it, and my main reason behind that is I look at it, and this highlighter does not bring me joy. It does not spark joy. It doesn't make me happy looking at it. It doesn't make me happy using it. In my opinion, it's okay. But I have so many other, like, if I'm going to, if I have this in my collection, I, there's no way I'm reaching for this over my Ofra, uh, not Pillow Talk, uh, Glazed Donut and Star Island. It's just not happening. So this one is gonna go. And then here we have the Estee Lauder Heat Wave. I bought this when I was still kind of flip-flopping between cruelty-free and not. I paid way too much for this thing. I remember getting up to the checkout counter, was like, oh my goodness, they have one. I was in Tennessee and I was like, they have it. I got caught up in the moment because it was all kinds of sold out. And I got up to the counter and she was like, your total is 56. And I'm like, what? And then I was a moron and still bought it. But uh, it's just, it's pretty. I mean, I've got a video that I'm going to be talking about makeup I shouldn't have bought. And I think I've just reached the realization. I mean, I have deeper goldy bronzy ones once again from Ofa, Ofra. I have that one from Bare Minerals. You know, there are ones that I'm going to reach for before this one that are cruelty free. And while I spent my hard earned whatever money on it, I think it's just time for me to cut the ties and let it go. So... Fenty Beauty. Clearly, I have a problem. For the longest time, I don't know why, but I was so resistant to buy anything from this brand. I don't know. I guess I get kind of, uh, when, when brands are like super hyped up, like I wasn't, I didn't try a lot from Milk, from Ofra, from Fenty, because people were just like, ah, and I'm like, ah, I don't 
don't know if I wanna. But I got bit by their highlighter bug and I am never going back. So I think realistically, I'm gonna be keeping all of these. Some of them are too deep and those I use either as blush or blush toppers because this is such a beautiful powder formula. It is so smooth, so buttery, so beautiful on the skin. Again. Here we have all of my babies lined up. These three slash four can work for me. Actually, that one is one of the most beautiful blush toppers that I own. I will be buried with that. So here we have Lightning Dust and Fire Crystal. This one here is Mean Money Hustler Baby. Girl Next Door and Chic Freak. This one is, ooh, Afternoon Snack and Mole Honey. This is one that when I've got a tan or if I want to add a little bit of glitz to a neutral blush, Mm, like I said, these are such a beautiful formula. And then this one is Ginger Binge and Moscow Mule. And these ones I keep. This one, I actually, part of the reason I decluttered that Makeup Revolution matte one in my first one is because this is, it's not matte, but it's not like that super glossy high shine. So if I want to highlight an area without like accentuating shininess, this is what I use. And I like this a lot better than that. And this one is in Metal Moon. Obviously, we have got Chills here and What a Brat. These I use, I mix them with a more neutral highlighter if I want to go more champagne-y or whatever. Or I can take a pink highlighter and really dilute that just to get a little bit richer bit of color. Amazing over a blush. This one is more obviously this was not made for my pasty skin tone, but it's kind of one of those things or it was, it was a moment. It was iconic. This is trophy wife and I need to figure out how to use this because this is just way too beautiful. I've used it as an eyeshadow and it is stunning, but I want to figure out a fancy editorial way of using this. This with like a yellow blush would be super pretty. And then these ones are those absolutely beautiful summer ones. This one, oh, I should move it into my blush drawer because that's mainly what I use these for as super punchy blushes. This is Mimosa Sunrise and Sangria Sunset, but I have issues with separating things. Like when it's a highlighter, I like it to be in my highlighter drawer. I'm just anal. This one is Sandcastle and Minted Mojito. This one right here, it's just so pretty. And then these two I do use as highlighters using, you know, something to kind of dilute the back pigment on. The pink one I can get away with using on its own. And then I also use these as blush toppers. This is a uh, seven day weekend and poolside. Let's get out of the way some more um, just straight up um, I'm just keeping for one reason that these were sent to me by a subscriber like the blushes. This highlighter right here, this was in a monthly favorites. Amazing. Same with this one. This one is like a new holy grail. It is just so smooth, so pigmented, so Dunning. And then this one right here. These two are a little bit deep. I need to wait until I have just a little bit of a tan or use these over top correlating blush tones. Like that one is so pretty. I think that's going to work really well for me in the peak of summer. If all of ColourPop's highlighters were this formula, I would own absolutely all of them. Absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely love these. Next up, Milk Makeup. These are their Flex Highlighters. I know for a fact one of these is technically too deep for me, which is this one, but it is so stunning. The shade of this, obviously I don't use it as a highlighter. It has, you can't really see on camera, but it's got pinky purple flecks in there. So this I have been using as a like blush topper, illuminating whateverness and have been absolutely loving it. Then this next one here in, oh my goodness. This one is in iced. It looks like it's a little bit deep, but this is actually a really good pale person gold. And then this one here, which I know is gonna be really nice for me in the summer is in lit. And I don't know if I said this one is in blitz. Beautiful 
beautiful formula. These are fantastic. Another another formula that if they like were like, okay, we're gonna release 20 more shades, I'd be like, I'm down. I'm totally okay with that. One that's a little bit random, I decluttered my other Laura Geller ones just because they were too dark for me. This one is in Diamond Dust. It's a pinky iridescent whatever. I'm pretty sure it was limited edition. I like it, but I've already kept so many pinky, dual chromey, shifty highlighters that I think uh, I, I'm okay with decluttering this one. Okay, now we have a bit of a collection of loose powder highlighters. I feel like loose highlighters are really fantastic. They're, the ones that I've tried at least are really great. I've got these ones from um, Cody or something like that. These were all three sent to me by a subscriber. These are really, really nice. I would say they're like subtle to medium. This is in Pink Me Up. Then this one here is in Glow for Gold. And finally, we have Snow Much Ice. These are all very pale person friendly. So definitely keep that in mind. Like even this one at the bottom that looks a little bit deep. Um, these do tend to sheer out pretty naturally just while you're applying them. So the color you see in there is a lot lighter when once you apply it to your face. Then we have the Wet n Wild Loose Highlighters. Obviously I am keeping my Moon Tears from the Gothographic Collection. I paid way way too much money for this, especially considering I believe this shade is basically the same thing in their um, permanent ones. But I'm going to keep both of these because I absolutely love the color and I never want to run out. I've also got the uh, Zodiac one, which is this really pinky shade. And then this one, I think was supposed to be a re-promoted version, but they're like a little bit different. This one on the right is more champagne-y, whereas this one on the left is more straight up like pinky. And then the one that I would like think the most about potentially decluttering is this one in Hustle and Glow, just because... I think it might be a little bit deep for me. Give me just a second. Yeah, that's it right there. It's skewing a bit more bronzy than I like. I do have my deep highlighters, like I said, from Ofra, same phrase, whatever. For second verse, same as the first. I just don't think this is going to be one that I'm going to reach for. So we'll declutter this one because it's, it's, it's just too deepy deep. Next on the powder front, we have these NYX Holographic Halos, which are actually really pretty. They're very finely milled and they do give you a lot of sparkle. I've heard a lot of people compare these to the um, Artist Couture formula and they are just very smooth and pack a lot of punch. Also, they say they're finishing powders. Y'all, this ain't no finishing powder. It's a highlighter. <laughs> this one here is in Mermazing and this one is in Woo. Uh, magical. They're both really, really pretty. Gonna be keeping them. Then, last but not least, on the loose highlighter front, I have these two from Sydney Grace that were sent to me by a subscriber, which is so sweet. Thank you so much. They also sent me my ever-so-favorite Danny bundle, which is one of my end-all, be-all green palettes. And while these are super pretty, I'm afraid they're just... A little too dark for me. This one I know is in Pumpkin Spice, which when I saw, I know Trend Mood posted it on her page and I was like, I want a highlighter named Pumpkin Spice. I'm a basic white girl. I mean, look at the sheen on those babies. Okay, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep the Pumpkin Spice. Actually, top one there, I swatched the Benefit Dandelion Twinkle, but I feel like I can declutter that and keep this Pumpkin Spice one and sort of do the same thing. And I really just love love that beautiful peachy dreamsicle look. So I'm going to keep the pumpkin spice one. I'm going to declutter Radiant Glow and I'm going to declutter the Benefit Dandelion Twinkle. Okay, next up are more Shop Miss A AOA Studio highlighters. These ones are a little bitty 
Bebe, uh, what did he's called? Pow lighter, like pow, pa chow chow. And these, they're okay. I mean, they're very, very, uh, doing this with nails is so hard. They're glittery. They've got, you know, a fairly nice sheen to them. They are gonna be more sparkly than like a smooth, just kind of like, uh, it's gonna be more sparkly, more festival esque, and less like natural glow from within. I did purchase these to do that, uh, um, inexpensive highlighter and blush video and if you're like looking to do kind of like you know Instagram photos or you're going to Coachella or rave or festivals or whatever they're good for that they're a dollar each but I think compared to the other powder highlighters that I have I'm just not going to be reaching for these so I feel okay with decluttering these in favor of the other powder highlighters that I've kept going on down the line y'all know Ea girl is not parting with her supreme frost and sometime someday i will get my hand on the extreme frost but for right now we're just gonna have these ones yes even the crazy green one and even the one that's very much too deep for me i just love these so so much. This one I top over a neutral blush just to give me a little bit of pop. And it's popping, I tell ya. It is popping. So we have one of my favorite. This one's Money Honey. Then here we have Diamond Wet. This one is going to be Frozen Peach. This one here is also one of my absolute favorites, Snow Globe. This one here, Wet Dream. This one is Caramel Kiss. And then this one is Candy Apple Drip. Absolutely love this formula. It is so good. Then another little teeny tiny thing. This is something that I got at Marshall's that I honestly probably shouldn't have purchased because I don't need any more highlighter. It's just this little baby right here in Tempting Topaz. This was in collaboration with I uh, cannot read cursive. You know, it was a cute little thing. I wanted to like, you know, be like, oh look, it's someone that I have no idea who is that's getting a whatever, you know? And it was a highlighter and it's whatever, but I have never put this on my face. It's cute. It's little, but I'm gonna let it go. Then we have these Too Faced. You would have seen these in a makeup rotation. I have fallen back in love with this one right here. It gives you such a beautiful, soft, and and just, just a very ethereal looking glow. I'll either use this side on its own or I'll mix them together. I have been reaching for this a lot. Now, this one I want to use a little bit more. I know that this one is, in fact, older than this one because they initially just had, I think, this one. No, this one is the newer one, so maybe the formula changed. And it's really pretty. I just don't think it's the same as this one, but I do want to get more use out of it, so I'm going to hold on to these two. Then two that I'm going to be parting with. These are just, they're just okay. Um, all the shimmer and shine is, it doesn't stay. It just kind of goes all over the place. Like, the first time I used these, I was really impressed, and then I went to use them again, and they just weren't weren't as amazing. This is a brand, I found it at Walmart. I haven't seen it at every Walmart, so I'm not sure what that means. This is Champagne Glow, and then this one here is in Luminous Glow. You know, they were okay, but I just know for a fact that they're not something that I'm gonna be reaching for. Okay, then if we're gonna talk about not reaching for, these are the ever so famous Too Faced Love Lights. Um. The packaging, oh, excuse me, Burp Squad. The packaging is everything. The imprint is stunning. I mean, I really need to get more use out of these. I want to try this one over top a peachy or a neutral or a rosy blush. I want to try to use this one sort of in the same vein that I'm going to try with the Natasha Denona and the Fenty Beauty one. Because clearly this one is not um, my skin tone appropriate because, like I said, I have a habit of needing to have the whole family. So I do want to try to use these and figure out what's up. This is Ray of Light. 
This one is You Light Up My Life and then Blinded by the Light. Okay, might as well finish up Too Faced. These are their, I'm pretty sure this first one here was like Diamond Fire or something like that. I used to not like it, but I've come to terms with figuring out how to use it. And I do think it's very pretty. This one here is in Fancy Pink Diamond. I really like this one. And then this one in Canary Diamond, I love using over a myriad of different blushes. You can't really really tell on camera, but it's got like pink, purple, reddy, gold, bronzy. It just suits itself to going over a, a myriad of different blush colors and giving you just a beautiful dimension and sheen to your cheeks. And I mean, Too Faced does it again with the packaging. I mean, that's what they're good at. Too Faced is good at making really pretty packaging and kind of okay formulas typically, but I'm gonna keep these. Last Too Faced highlighter, I'm gonna keep this. This is the, this was with their like festival collection. This is the Rainbow Strobe. I actually like this. I got it because I have issues, but it's actually really pretty. And and it does give you kind of this like soft, diffuse, sparkly, ethereal, whatever princessy fairiness, which is something you guys all know that I look for in a highlighter. Then two more that I'm pretty sure you guys, for those of you who have been with me for an extended period of time, when these came out, I was using them so much. They are an amazing, amazing highlighter formula. I need Pixie to take this formula and just give me a range. I said it ever since they first came out with them and I will say it again. These are so beautiful. I should probably try to use these in some kind of project use up because they're getting old. I've noticed that they're not quite as performing as they used to. They're still beautiful, but I need, I need to get more use out of them. I'm not ready yet to part with these. All right, everybody, let's tackle the inv alien invasion of the Becca highlighters. Your girl has a problem with Becca. So we're gonna open all these up and see what's what. Okay, here is the ridiculousness in all of its glory. Reality, I'm probably only getting rid of a few of these because a lot of these, as much as I crap on the Becca highlighter formula, I'm like, I would recommend this over that highlighter. There are a lot of these that I actually really love, like Vanilla Quartz right here, Bomb diggity, I love this. So for reference up here, we have the original line. We have got Pearl, which is staying. We have got Moonstone, which is staying. We have got Opal, which is staying. We have got Rose Gold, which is staying, not because it's a color that um, is made for my skin tone, but because I love it over blushes. We are, however, decluttering. Um, what is this? Topaz, because your girl ain't not a topaz um, skin tone. So this one is going because it is too dark for me. Then over here, we have got more additions. This one here is Champagne Pop. I'm keeping that one. Then we have Prosecco Pop. Keeping that one. Oh my goodness, Rose Quartz Rose so beautiful. Keeping that one. I mean, basically all the rest of these I'm keeping. This one here is bronzed amber, which is too dark as a highlighter, but beautiful as a blush topper. Golden mint, which y'all know I love. We've got Year of the Pig. Berlin Girl Glow. This one here is, I'm pretty sure, Smoky Quartz. Yep. This one here, I'm, I really want to figure out how to use. It's too dark for me. This is champagne gold. I mean, it's yellow, but I do want to figure out to find a way how to use that. Lilac Geode. Um, this one here is the Breast Cancer Opal. I am keeping this one. Prismatic Amethyst. This one is that fancy whatever one. This one is in pure pearl. Completely different formula. I like it. It's pretty. Then Parisian Glow Spanish Rose Glow, Dreamsicle, which is 
so beautiful mixed with moonstone absolutely stunning oh this one is berlin girl glow the other one was royal glow and then gold lava and last but not least i am actually going to be decluttering my becca light chasers after pulling these into a makeup rotation it just wasn't something that i was really enjoying it wasn't giving me what I wanted in a highlighter. I would swatch it and it would be all kinds of pretty and then I wouldn't be able to get that effect on my face. So these are all going. This is Pearl Flashes Gold. This one here I'm pretty sure is Champagne Dreams. Uh, Champagne Dream Flashes Bellini. This is Rose Quartz Flashes Seashell. And then even the most tempting one here, I just, I just don't get on with the formula. And this one here is Opal Flashes Jade. Never thought I would see the day that I would be decluttering Becca highlighters, but I just, I don't like the formula of these compared to their other ones. Okay, this is the highlighter declutter aftermath. I am going to attempt to organize all of these into those little bins. When I come back after that, we will address the maybe pile and then I will give you what I'm keeping and what I am decluttering. Okay, this is our final tally. I was actually very surprised and pleased with what we got rid of. We got rid of 71 highlighters, which is over my hopeful 50. And then I decided to just kind of bite the bullet and get rid of all of these liquid. I'm just not using them. I'm gonna use my collab and my Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector liquids before I reach for any of those. So for the sake of what I use in my collection and what I know I reach for, I'm just decluttering those. So on a whole, we are decluttering 79 highlighters, which I know sounds freakishly absurd. And then this here is what we are keeping. And we are keeping a um, whopping <laughs> 220. But I do feel like we did reach a good point. I decided to keep the hourglass ambient lighting ones. I decided to declutter the AOA Perfect Studio ones. And I'm trying to remember if those were the only ones I was questioning. I'm not entirely sure, but this is where we're at. We got the blessed whatevers here, which I am very happy and hopeful that everything is going to fit all up in here. Obviously, y'all go find that out when we do the whole makeup collection type thing. But yes, we have decluttered 79 and keeping 220. I feel very good. Oh, excuse me. Burp Squad. The video after this is going to be face palettes. I have no idea how that's going to go because as much as I don't use face palettes, um, I like holding on to them, especially, especially highlighter palettes because y'all know I obviously have a problem but thank you guys so much for watching I love you and as always keep it real Mwah.